My name is Asif Iqbal, and I uh, head uh, International Human Resources for one of the uh, downstream lubricants companies of the world, Gulf Oil International. Um, let's see uh, what the company is all about, and then I would progress in the next 25 minutes. I would share my experience with you in terms of how within the Gulf Oil International, we have created the sustainable leadership pipeline. And one of the most important aspects of our HR practitioner's life is to work on the succession, which is quite ignored topic still. And I will show you on the basis of the mega trends uh, how important it's going to be in the working life within the HR to bring the succession into the centerpiece of it and how we have connected the executive management development programs to actually address the whole succession piece within the organization. I'm very mindful of the fact that in this room, we have more than 500 years of HR experience sitting. Mm -hmm. So my objective is not to educate you. What I'm trying to do is to share the experience, which, is, which might be practical tips for some of you, and which might be a validation point for me too. So let's do that as a, as a point of validation from that perspective. On the foundation of Gulf Oil's learning and, and the development initiatives to deliver the succession planning in the backdrop of the mega trends that's emerging in order to manage the workforce that we are facing within the uh, oil and the gas industry. But before I take you to that journey uh, in, f in the next 20, 25 minutes, uh, I would like you to know who we are, a very short video. Gulf Oil began its journey in 1901. Since then, we have led the way to become one of the world's most iconic brands, trusted by millions of customers globally. We are pioneers. Constantly seeking new opportunities. Gulf Oil operates in over 100 countries, products and businesses that include lubricants, retail, car care, and gas and power. We keep the world moving on water, in the air, and on the ground. Our world-class R&D facility sits behind Gulf Oil's superior products, the preferred choice of many world-class OEMs, who we are proud to call our partners. Today, there are close to 3,000 retail stations operating under the Gulf Oil brand name. We are investing in exciting emerging markets like China, the Middle East, Africa, Southeast Asia, and India, where we are the fastest growing brand and among the top three in our sector. Our brand gives our business partners a competitive edge. In motor racing, we have an incredible legacy, working alongside some of the most successful brands and being part of the most famous races. Our iconic colors continue to be seen on cars and around tracks today. Through our sponsorship of Manchester United and the Chennai Super Kings, we are strengthening our brand in the world's biggest markets. Gulf Oil is built on the values of quality, endurance, and passion. Today, we are building on our history to deliver a winning formula for the future. That's about the Gulf. So it has given you an idea in terms of how international we are, how diverse we are, uh, how young and flexible we are, and how traditional aspects of the business that we deal in. And that would give you a foundation of the kind of challenges that we as HR practitioners are facing in implementing and infusing the executive management development program connecting to the succession planning. And that was the whole objective of putting that video for you. I would like to begin my discussion with you on the very important topic that you keep on hearing since morning, automation, artificial intelligence, millennials, and all those kind of stuff. I think it's important for all of us to think about this important question. Over the next 10 years, what's going to me and my job? There could be three answers. It might be replacing a job, or augmenting, 
of no impact to my job. Think about that. And that would give you an idea in terms of how you can shape your strategy from an organization perspective going forward that could link to your core succession planning. If you look at this picture, you can find and spot some quick differences. If you look at it, it's only talking about 10 years, 2005 and 2015. This is reality. You can easily spot the difference between the two pictures. And that is where the whole concept of education, the learning and the development initiatives and the challenges are coming out to be. I would give you another example, which might be the increasing pace of the disruption. Look at the Nokia. This is one of the feature of the magazine when the Nokia was the king. Where is the Nokia today? And we talk about iPhone and now we are talking about Samsung replacing iPhone too. So the change is very imminent. Change is something which is very quick. The organizations are changing at a fast speed and we have to think innovatively, keeping the foundations intact in terms of how we can bring the whole succession piece into the place in order to mitigate the risk of finding the problem with the skills available in the market. Okay, that is from, from where the whole concept is coming in terms of management development program in connecting to the in the succession planning within the organization. Look at the Netflix and the Blockbuster. These are the examples that you can find, which is evident in terms of how quickly the organizations and the workplace and the world is changing. Another aspect of it is the technological impacts and the trends. The United Nations report suggests that manufacturing world, 43% of the job, would have 25% reduction in the labor force because of the automation and the artificial intelligence. So this is coming up as the reality within the business to mitigate. And that's important for us to know that. You can find another e example in terms of how challenging the workplace is going to be. We are the unique generation who are actually catering four generations of the workforce at one time within any organization, four generations. So it's not only millennials that we are talking about, but we are also talking about generation X, generation Y, and then there are so many. But in, this is the fact that 50% of the workplace is going to be between 25 years of age to 42 years of age. That's going to be the situation. And it's not far off. It's talking about the next five years. So this is the challenge that you have to prepare yourself with. So every single initiative that you are planning in your five years strategy within the organization should have a very clear agenda in terms of how to mitigate the risk of the workforce where you have a traditional workforce working, the father and the son and son's son is working. In my organization, I have many examples where the father and the relatives are working, three generations at one time. For father, what is important is the loyalty, integrity, honesty, agility, long-term, stability. For the son, what is important is flexible working, automation, higher benefits, high compensation package, quick promotions. Mitigating these two, bringing them together in order to devise your structure so that it could actually fulfill the entire organizational need, of course, is challenging. And you know as a HR practitioner that this is something which, is, which you have to look at when you're devising your strategy going forward on the management development. If you look at the skills, and, um, and, and my previous uh, speaker was speaking on the skills, and I think um, my thoughts aligns with her thought in terms of what's going to be the key skills now in 2020, and we're talking about two, 2019 today, and it's only five years difference. So you can see that some of the traditional skills that we think would be very prominent in making you successful is not there. And where the world is leading to from a skills perspective is the complex problem solving. Where the world is leading to in terms of skills is the critical thinking, creativity. So you can find that these are the skills that should drive your competency when you actually design the leadership competencies within the organization. And that's the, that's the take that we, have, we, we were very mindful when we were devising the various executive management development programs within our organization. And I'll share with you the story in terms of how we have attracted the attention of the chief executives and their direct reports and the middle management and the sales force, which is the central point in order to progress from our growth agenda perspective. If you look at the global statistics, this is very important 
point that I would, I would like you to be mindful is that is still, in spite of the fact that the world is changing at an increasing speed and the pace, only 38% of the organizations are thinking about succession planning. So that's completely ignored subject and very difficult. And I'll show you the challenges that we are having in the oil and gas industry in terms of non-availability of the resources in order to take your leadership position. And still the organizations are not talking about succession planning. Still the organizations are not talking about high potential identification in a structured manner. They are doing that in a very low level, unstructured way, but not a very structured approach in order to bring that in as a centerpiece of the agenda. Leadership development. 44% of the organizations are talking about it. Rest of the people are just sending their leaders to Kellogg's business school, this business school, that business school, seven days there, they come back and they forget about it. Unless and until you do a bespoke work in order to connect the growth and the career with the succession, bringing those inputs into your central system, those programs, I'm sorry, would do a very peace job it would not be a long lasting and it would not help you from an organization. So you can send your executives to the highest management business schools, but how is that impacting your core competencies? And that is something you have to be very mindful of. And that is where the 44% of the ratio is coming up. If you look at measurement of the performance, we are very quick on 54% at this point in time, but still it's 50%, not more than that. Where half of the organizations are doing the whole performance management in a very unstructured manner. If you look at management leadership focus, I was surprised to note this data from ENY that leaders, 0% in the organization, leaders are actually paying attention in developing the talent of the organization. They leave it to HR or they leave it to their line managers. They are not thinking about it. So these are very mind revealing data which we have to be mindful in terms of focusing your strategy. And we in the Gulf Oil have taken a lot of inputs from the mega trends have taken a lot of inputs from the various sources, whether it's the CIPD or it is ENY or it is PwC or any other structured organizations who keep on conducting this research and build the whole structure and the competencies on the basis of that, connected that with the management development programs at the different levels and the outcome was rooted to the succession planning and I would show you how we have done that. If you look at the global talent challenge and, and I'm talking about oil and gas sector because um, I do not want to make it a very general uh, conversation. Aging workforce, we don't have the right resources in the right age at this point in time to take our leadership position within the oil and gas sector. Increased competition, people don't find oil and gas industry as sex industry. They want to go into the IT. They just want to f go into the place where they can go to the world. We are still a traditional organization. So where would you find the right leaders available in the market? There might be many people because of the redundancies, but are they the right leaders to lead your organization? A skill shortage. They charge premium. Can we afford the premium? We can't afford the premium, the right leader. So those are the challenges within the oil and the gas industry. Shortage of skilled leaders and high level of investment on hiring the best talents. These are genuine problems. So how would you mitigate that? The only way to mitigate that is to focus on your succession planning agenda, which is in your hand. And that is where the whole problem and the perspective is coming into the, into the shape. Now, when I when I was doing a research in terms of what are the essential roles going to be of a leader in a progressive organization, I mean, you can find thousands of the, of the material available on the website. I thought it would be good to just express my feeling that a leader from my perspective, on the basis of the mega trends coming and the skills, have four core duties within the organization. Inspiring the trust, creating the vision, executing the strategy, and coaching the potential. So again, the whole efforts on the coaching and the mentoring needs to be looked at as a very intense subject. And I'm very proud to share with you that within the Gulf Oil International, we have made one compulsory course for the leaders to convert them as a workplace coaches. So all our leaders, and we have out of 1600, we have 57 top leaders. They have been given workplace coaching skills courses and they have gone through the entire um, uh, you know, the written assessment and the practical assessment and the coaching assessments and some of them have failed, some of them have passed, but we have now 60% of the top leaders as workplace coaches. 
and they are our ambassadors because when they buy the point of leading the organization as coaches, they push their people down to them in order to become the coaches at the workplace. If they don't understand, most of the organizations, what they do is they send their middle level staff into these kind of programs. They say, I am larger than life. I don't need any coaching now. You go and attend the coaching, come back and start working. But you're not changing the culture by not sending the chief executive into these kind of programs because unless and until your chief executive and the general manager is sitting, nobody would appreciate what you have learned and the general manager would keep doing the exactly the same behavior as he or she was and the entire organization is changing. So you have to also target the chief executive and the general management and the senior management in order to go through the program in a very structured manner when it comes to the coaching. So the Gulf has attempted that and we have now 60% of our staff qualified workplace coaches and they are coaching their, their people accordingly. The journey has been very tough, I can tell you. I mean, it is very, it is very difficult to express that in 20, 25 minutes time. If, if you come down to my office, I'll show you the kind of trauma and the roller coaster journey and <laughs> right so so those things will will be but that is how you're impacting the bottom line of the organization if you go on to what gulf has done and and this is where my point of conversation is coming in terms of the intervention that we have done we might have done it wrongly and and, and the whole idea is to get it validated by you too and the whole idea is that some of you might get some tips from here because because I'm a practitioner of human resources and when the organizers have contacted me to speak on something, I said the only thing that I could do is to share what we have done so that somebody should get the inspiration and I can get the inspiration from somebody. So please have a look of it. So what we did is we have the vision and the mission and the values within the organization, which is very aggressive. You know, we are talking about becoming a billion dollar organization in the next five years. When the industry is going single digit, we want to go double digit growth year on year. Very aggressive. We are talking about expanding the operations from um, 26 countries of the world to 60 countries of the world in the next five years. Very aggressive. And we are talking about oil and gas industry, which is going through its own trauma, as you know. And then another challenge that is there with us is that we are very young, we are very diverse, and we are very international. So you look, look, at, look at the nationalities that we cater. We have 55 nationalities. The average age is 45 years. So the organization is predominantly a knowledge worker organization. And they have their own expectations because they all are larger than life. They all know everything. So you have to cater the expectations in that perspective. And then on the basis of the mega trends where the organization should live, we have plugged in those data also when we have designed our leadership uh, development strategy. How we have so this is exactly how the Gulf is. And the video might have given you the impression. So it's talking about disruptive, shaking, challenging, evolving, flexible, responsive. This is, this, is, this is kind of the nature and the attitude of the organization is. And what we have done is that we have focused on three aspects of it. Driving the performance culture because the growth agenda was directly connected with that. No compromise on it and made our performance management very objective. Worked on the talent <coughs> capability and, there, and this is where the whole management development program and executive leadership development program has come into the place. And then the work environment. The competency was very important for us. And we have worked on these seven competencies and the subclusters to look into making an organization move from practitioner level to advanced level. We have not touched on the expert level because it is not possible for us. If we need an expert, we'll go to the consultants. But at a practitioner's level, we had gone up to the advanced level. So we have moved the middle management. The whole effort was to move the middle management from practitioner level to the experienced level and move the senior management from experienced level to the advanced level. And that is how the whole structure has come into the place from management development perspective. And if you look at it, these are the solid bespoke program that we have launched for different category of the people. One of the very important conversation we were doing before the session started is that, before the session started was, um, people do not want to move because when you do not have, when you, when you ask people to go for a training program, people think you are taking their job away. So people do not do. And I was having this conversation with the lady sitting here. And I said, the way we have mitigated that risk is that you have to give a career path to your senior management and also career path to your middle management. Unless and until you give career path to your senior management, senior management will not move to the next career because they think you are taking their job away. So if you give a career path to them, so what we did within the Gulf is that we have targeted senior management through Gulf Oil Advanced Leadership Program. And then we have targeted middle management through Emerging Leadership Program. And then we have done a very bespoke program for our sales workforce called Sales Excellence Program. And that was 
combined with a lot of follow up on the webinars, on the sessions, on one to one coaching, mentoring, in order to give them a surety that no one is losing the job here. It's a progressive journey that we have to get on to. And that is how they have actually taken this course on. And so that you have now the talent pool that you wanted to have in order to put that when the new, new, new vacancy is coming up or when there is a gap. So I wanted to give you this idea in terms of you cannot have one section of the population catered for and leave other population. You have to have the program and the agenda that should cater all the kinds of population within the organization in order to attract the attention of the senior, middle, and the junior management. And then on the basis of the strategy that your organization is having, on the basis of the budgeting that you have, focus on the content accordingly for the different scheme of the things. But you cannot bring the change or succession planning activation within an organization by ignoring one community. Okay, so this is where we have landed in terms of the various programs. And what happened, now just, just a glimpse of how we have done that. Now, most of the organizations, and I have spent 20 years of working life in the different sectors, whether it is IT or manufacturing and now oil and gas, so have seen the organizations you know, from a, a little detailed manner as a practitioner. Most of the time, the, the, the programs that the learning and the development department is actually building on is a very shift program. It's a shelf program. You come, you attend, you, you attend negotiation skills, you go back home. You attend win-win negotiation, you, you go back. You attend communication skills, you go back. Three days, two days, people come, they enjoy the day, they enjoy the day off, and they go back. If you do not have the ability to have a long-term plan which is actually executing to a reward to them at the end, with the help of a thorough written assessment, the pre-arrival assessment in terms of where you are, post assessment after three months of the IDPs, and all those kind of things are not into the place, people will not take your training program seriously. In the Gulf, what we did is, for example, Gulf Oil Advanced Leadership Program for Chief Executives and their direct reports, it was a journey from a transitional leadership to a transformational leadership from a scope perspective. We did pre-assessment of the people. So we have said, the Chief Executive of Indonesia, your status at this point in time is this, this is where you are, and that was very scary. And then they have gone through the entire workshop and a lot of pre-arrival material. Like they come, they have studied, they have gone through the different tests, whether it is MBTI or it is team process or the functional, then they have gone through the workshop. During the workshop, at the end of it, they have gone through the written assessment, the practical assessment, the results have been given to them. So you have to position the whole program and, and then they have been given the individual development program. So they have worked on that for three and a half, four months and then they have come back and then we did a reassessment to tell them the story that they have traveled from where they have started to where they are today. So each of them also own that as a very bespoke program for themselves. And that is how they have completely aligned them with the program. And then they do the same thing for the people who are reporting to them. So pre-arrival workshops, post-arrival assessments, written assessment, brand your program in such a manner that if you don't do this, you're not progressing. Connect that with the performance. A lot of people have said to me, the only way we can actually achieve an effective training program is to put that as a part of their performance management system. I don't agree with that. Performance, you cannot put a performance management system for everything. This is a career development of an individual. If the individual sees the outcome as becoming the chief executive in the next three years by doing this program, which is directly connected with the strategy of the organization, why will an individual will not inspire the team to go through that? I don't see a reason for that. I have experienced that in the organization. And I do not want to believe that your organization is tougher than my organization. Come to my office and I'll show you how tough it is. We face the same consequence everywhere. The people would be people. So what we did is we have, we have made this such a branded program within the organization that it has now become a part and parcel of the organization that unless and until you have attended the goal, you would not be considered for a promotional role as the general manager and the chief executive within the organization. So if you are not nominated, which means you are not doing well, and then you have to have a very robust criteria in terms of the nominations. Most of the organizations, how do you nominate people? Okay, so you, you do not have a lot of things going on in your work, go for the training program now. That is how we deal with the training, right? Here we have made it absolutely structured that unless and until you have consistently performed three years meets expectation or exceeds expectation, you would not be nominated for this program. It's a bespoke 
highly structured program. So they value their nomination, and they also value the outcome out of it. Only then you can connect your strategy, your learning and development strategy, with your outcome on the succession side of it. And that is exactly how we have done. The journey has been very difficult. It's, it's still difficult. I still face a lot of problems. But that's how we are, right? I mean, you have been paid to actually make things easy for the people and impact the bottom line of the organization. If you get into it, and this is another e -e, uh, e website, um, you know, the e-learning programs that you might be having. We have put a lot of programs on that, which is absolutely a bespoke program for the people. It is not something which is a general program. So you have a management program, you have a technical program. So it's all going through in such a manner that the agenda has transitioned from zero mandates of the training to seven mandates of the training within the organization in a span of two years' time. The journey of getting seven days out of the life of an individual who were larger than life, very busy, organization will collapse, to seven days of actual working and progressing, the journey has been very, very difficult. But you have to achieve that journey in order to get your succession done. Otherwise, you would not achieve it. And that is how we have done. So if you look at it, it has identified and empowered the top performers. It has built a robot, robust talent pool for your organization. It has elevated the capabilities and built the skills that you require within the organization. It has promoted the interior career mobility, radically reduces the recruitment cost. And then it has also enhanced the retention rate and accelerated the succession planning. So what's in it for me? Bottom line, so to top 25% of the participants are my chief executive. So right now, 50% of my hiring within the organization for the next role as a chief executive is internal. We only go for a very, very challenging organization for the external hiring so far. If you look at uh, uh, a reduction in the recruitment cost, yes, 50%, because a lot of people are already available within the system to take over the role. And of course, you have to connect that with the performance management system by saying, how many years you would be ready for the next role and those kind of things that you normally do, right? But you have the talent pool available. You can easily achieve that by having a bespoke, bespoke program and not a shelf program. What we did was, together, we have created magic by infusing this. And that's me for you.